Hey guys, Ray Lynn here, and we're about to get Cray Cray. And if you love wrestling, and I love wrestling, we love wrestling. <laughs> well, welcome to Women on Wednesday. Um, we have here with us Ray Lynn. Um, I, I, I'll just always give an intro, but I had some things that's queued up because I actually been waiting to talk to Ray Lynn. So I just want to let Ray Lynn hear some of my words that I've said about her over the last year and then watch your video and then we'll get right into it. That sounds great. Thank you. Ray Lynn, the more and more I see you, I saw you last at Warrior Wrestling last summer, but every time I see you, you are impressing me more and more. Mm -hmm. You're coming up that list. Only reason I said I wanted to pass it up because I could talk about this match all night yeah, it was the way it was they they transition from move to move the way they was outside the ring back in the ring the way they was one up in each other like oh let me do this the other person doing that yeah. they was both out here doing their thing it was like they popped up someone they was like got my bag <laughs> let me get my bag and get all that you know yep. I, I... so that was from our Mission Pro review last March, uh, where you faced Kylene King. Um, yeah. That was one of our top matches. A lot of people slept on that match in 2021. I didn't speak about it at the end of the year, but I did want to let people know about that. Uh, so, Ray Lynn, the first question I always ask is, why do you love wrestling or what started your love for wrestling? My story is way different than most people's. I didn't grow up watching wrestling. I did see it, though. Like, I watched it here and there, and I definitely played wrestling on the trampoline with my cousins and brother. Um, but it wasn't – I was more like Power Rangers, um, Ninja Turtles kind of person. So wrestling wasn't my thing, really. Um, I was 23, and I was bartending at this bar called Cheers on – Monday nights and the guys always wanted to put on raw and I was like guys this is like for kids and then I ended up actually getting really into it I'm like this is great um so we were watching it on Monday nights and my father like passed away out of nowhere it was very unexpected and I took off work for a week and my first night back was Monday night and I remember like looking up at the tv and like for whatever reason it was like the first time I wasn't thinking about everything that had happened it was like a crazy whirlwind of a week and I was watching it and like, as the weeks went on, I, I knew I wanted something more out of my life than what I was doing. And I kept watching it and thinking, wow, like there's somewhere different every single week. And I'm like, I have a background in sports and martial arts and stuff. I'm like, I'm gonna give this a try. So my father passed away in October and by April, I was moving down to Louisville, Kentucky to train at OVW. I'm glad uh, you said something there that uh, I was wondering. You have a background in martial arts because there are times do. I see you out there. you kicking somebody's head off. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I'm like, did she do uh, martial arts or anything growing up? So glad I you did. have a background in that. Um, I, oh, I yeah. started when I was four and I got my black belt by the time I was, I, I can't remember if it was 14 or 15. So you're a, a certified black belt. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> I haven't practiced in years other than on oh. people. Or anything, so. <laughs> but you still got the black belt. I mean, that's <laughs> it's still there. So, Actually, we have it up. We have a collection of, um, I guess you can't see it because it's on the other side of the room. But we have a collection of belts and my black belts right in between all of the wrestling belts. Mm, a collection of belts. You're, yeah. You're the current champion of anywhere. Uh, MCW. ICW? PA? Uh, MCW. In, uh, MCW. Baltimore. Yeah. Oh, you just was at a uh, season beatings in uh, Baltimore. Um, yeah. You the women's champion. How does it feel? I am the women's there? champion. <laughs> I love it there. It's um a really great crowd. Like it's always a big crowd, and then everyone in the locker room is really cool. Uh, and it's not too far from home. It's like four hours, so it's like my home away from home now that I don't really wrestle at IWC much. Okay. Okay. Home away from home. Uh, let's go back to OVW. So okay. when you got into wrestling, um, what like steered you or, or had you go down to OVW to start? Did you know? Um, no, I didn't. Like, I didn't grow up watching wrestling, like I said, but um, what did I find? I found Beyond the Mat. 
I went to, there was a place called The Exchange and I bought a bunch of old wrestling DVDs because I was like, I don't really know much about it. So I should probably like watch some stuff. I was watching Beyond the Mat and one of the places they went was OVW. And then I remember Googling wrestling schools. I don't even think I had a computer at the time. Like I was, I think I had to go to the library to do this. So I was at the library looking up wrestling schools. I found a few in Pittsburgh. Um, and when I checked them out, they were talking about top indie talent. I was like, I don't know what indie wrestling is. I went to OVW and they're like, we, John Cena, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar. I'm like, oh, that's what I want to do. That's kind of wrestling <laughs> I want to do. So it was like a no brainer. I'm like, I'm going to OVW. <laughs> Done. Pack the car. <laughs> Did your um, time at OVW, is that would help you uh, get the match, the appearance on Raw? Um, no. I had moved around so much by that time. Uh, I spent two, I've kind of spent two years everywhere. Um, I spent two years in Louisville, Kentucky at OVW, maybe a year and a half. Then I moved back up to Pittsburgh and I trained here at IWC a little bit. And then I went to Detroit and I trained at the House of Truth. And then I lived out, I think I lived out in LA whenever I did that match. So I was probably training with um, Peter Avalon. He's on uh, AEW. And I would train with him because he was my roommate at the time. So by the time we did that, like, they were always calling me and Britt Baker in to do extra work. Mm -hmm. So we were always were backstage at WWE. And I remember she had a match once and then I had a match the second time we went. And that's what that was. They just always had us there. Um, mm -hmm. But actually the first time I went to do extra work, I think OVW is who put us there. They sent a group of us and it was in Chicago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so you've been wrestling, say maybe seven eight years eight years i think eight years. <laughs> but you've been at basically all the major companies at a point impact ring of honor all of them <laughs> <laughs> um mm, which mm, what was the best <laughs> experience for you at one of the major companies i had to get the question right so my yeah you're like how do i politically <laughs> say this um <laughs> That's fair. Um, you know, everything, everyone was a different experience. I really liked when I was at AEW because I wrestled Ty Conti and um, Thunder Rosa. And those are two people that I've wrestled on the indies a few times. So I liked them very much. And I, it was enjoyable to have matches with them in, on a bigger platform. Um, Impact. I love Impact Locker Room. I, um, my tag partner from WOW is actually uh, Alicia Edwards. So... I knew everyone there and I had a, I wrestled with Taya Valkyrie and Tessa Blanchard when I was on there. And I mean, they're both very incredible athletes. So I, I've had the opportunities to work with some very awesome athletes when I was on these. Um, like I wrestled for Ring of Honor a few times. I don't really recall the matches so well. Those have been a while, um, but every locker room was great and everything's like an experience. And I get kind of like, it's like this little stepping stone led to this and this led to this. So everything was really cool but i think it would be between impact and aew where i enjoyed myself the most and i got to do a, I got to show a little bit more some of those places don't they'll be like oh you know oh, it, it's a match it's a match here you are and then like there i actually got to show a little bit of who i was so let's talk about aew a little bit okay so, like you said you were able you wrestled thunder rosa on aew but you also wrestled Thunder Rosa at Mission Pro. I have. I've wrestled, I think you wrestled uh, Thunder Rosa and I have wrestled a lot mm -hmm. and for the past um, maybe five years. So it wasn't our first time seeing each other. We beat the shit out of each other. That's what we do. Like we're sisters and we hug <laughs> it out at the end. But like we are not holding back when we get in the ring together. It's like, ah, bitch. <laughs> sisters, uh, a ring of honor match that I uh, saw and that's right. Somebody That's right. Else, uh, that talks very highly of you. Um, Holly Dead. Love Holly um, Dead. You, you and Samantha Highspace, the Twisted Sisters. Um, yeah, that was it. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, I can't remember what was I, at this point. Like, I've had so many matches and I've just traveled so much. Like, I just kind of forget, like, where I'm like, what was it? And then, like, it'll pop in my head. Obviously, AEW is more recent, so I'm like, eh, and it was Thunder Rosa. Like I said, she's one of my sisters. I love her. We wrestled a million times. I'll wrestle her a million more times, hopefully. So we had Holly did own, and 
she was just talking about people who are not getting um the proper look as she would say um that should be signed by a major company and your name came up and she put you over immensely <laughs> um, that's my fire alarm my boyfriend's cooking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it goes off a lot <laughs> I was like, is there something here in my house? Okay. No, that's mine. <laughs> Ring the alarm. We on fire right now. Okay. <laughs> um, but she puts you over immensely as someone who should be signed because um, you work your ass off and you've been out here. Um, is your, because I talk to a lot of people now and the independent scene is very big and doing great out here. Um, is your goal still to be signed or are you okay with working on the indies? You know, I'm just having fun and I get to do what I love doing. And if I get a couple spots here and there on TV, that's cool. It used to be, it was WWE or bust whenever I started. Right. And now I've just got to do so many cool things. I've met so many cool people and like without wrestling, my life wouldn't be what it was. I'd probably still be really, really drunk bartending. So <laughs> that's not cute whenever you're older. So um, yeah, it's, it, it would be cool. I am getting older though, so if it doesn't happen, I'm not gonna be disappointed because I have got to do so much. And um, yeah, like I said, I would have never met Holiday, I would have never met Thunder Rosa, I would have never met uh, Zoe Sky, which is another one that she's just incredible. Uh, I've met so many amazing people. I don't want to forget about anyone, but those are like the people that stand out in my mind for like road trips, fun. So <laughs> obviously, my tag partner too, Heather. Um, she's someone I met through wrestling. It's just I've met so many awesome people. I can't. I'll never. Uh, if I don't get signed, oh, I've had some great experiences. And that whenever I'm old and I'm cutting hair still, I'll be like talking about all the cool shit I did. <laughs> she does cut hair, people. <laughs> I was in, uh, <laughs> when she told me she had to work out, I, I looked up because I was going to be in Pittsburgh. I said, mm, it'd be kind of cool to get my hair cut by. <laughs> then I realized I was bald. So do you also do the beard? You know, I do. Mm. I, I'm a barber, so I'm, I do all of it. Well, Information to know. Not all of it. I really don't do color anymore, but I cut men's hair and women's hair. They want short haircuts. <laughs> Something to know if you're in the Pittsburgh area looking the books. I mean, she's kind of busy, but hey, you might be able to get in. You have to book at least two weeks in advance, usually. Graham's Barbershop. <laughs> there it is. Um, now, you, you mentioned someone out here, you know, um, your tag team partner, your current one, you know, uh, I watch, <laughs> I watch you all, and I laugh every time I say the name of uh, Blind Force Trauma. <laughs> um, <laughs> can I ask how you came up with that? I mean, I so know. <laughs> we didn't actually come up with it. Heidi Houtzer, I don't know. I'm probably saying her name wrong. Thunderdome Heidi, style? Yeah. Okay. She came up with that name, and we both love it because, like, me and her are addicted to like true crime and stuff. So we're like, "Oh, blood force trauma, blood force trauma." That's so good. And usually, I'm blonde. I just haven't been for a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Heidi, shout out to you for giving the name. Uh, I have to we'll... give her credit where credits due, right? Because when I heard the name, I was like, you know, blood force, blind force. I mean, it, it goes together. Uh, it makes sense in wrestling. I mean, your tag partners are here, but I, I, I asked you a few questions about it. Um, how did you and Heather Monroe connect as a tag team? Because, I mean, seeing you two together, your chemistry is great. Um, and I like what you're doing. You know, uh, I feel if they don't know you guys are a tag team, they should look out for. Right. So, uh, <laughs> how did that come about? So we both lived in L.A. at a point. And that's how we met. And we were very similar. Like someone we had, like, we even had matching gear then. And we didn't know each other. So we're like, oh, well, who is this girl wearing the same stuff as me, right? So it was kind of like that. And then I realized, like, we are just, like, our personalities are very similar. We're both, like, just those kind of people. Very, I don't know, bubbly, charismatic kind of people. So we were, like, drawn to each other. But she was uh, tagging with Laura James at the time. And I was tagging with Karen Q, but only at, like, Rise and stuff. So we had both like kind of rotated through tech partners and it was like, I would say around August of this year, I said, you know, I think women's tag is going to be something huge this year. And I was like, I think that we make sense as a, I like literally wrote her proposal and I was like, I just think we make sense. What do you think? And she's like, absolutely. Let's do this. So she came up to Pittsburgh. We 
did a bunch of promos. We did a couple photo shoots. We begged for a match here in Pittsburgh. So we got the tag and we got footage of it. So that's how we started. We've both been putting in a lot of effort on both sides. So it works. Um, it really does work. It's whenever we communicate about things that we need to get done. So, Heather, if you see this, I'll see you um, at the Diamond Cup January 22nd. <laughs> but all promotions, uh, this is a little PSA I usually do because I know some of you promoters do watch this and you, and you message me. Please book Blind Force Trauma. Um, I've seen them live, and when I say it's, it's some greatness going on, it, it's a great tag team to – the back and forth moves they Heather might throw somebody Ray Lynn a kick them. <laughs> you know, she a super kick, Heather a do the the oh, it, it's great. It's stuff. only gonna and this is only what we're a couple months in now, it's only gonna get better. Things couple are gonna be weeks. it's gonna be great. <laughs> and women's tag team wrestling, like you said, uh it's on the right. I mean women's wrestling in general right now, yeah. it's a good time to be in it. And it's more and more tag teams coming out or singles wrestlers getting together and actually being cohesive teams. So that's something that, matter of fact, let me show this highlight video so I can let these. Sounds good. <laughs> I got something. You're not here, you're missing out. Is this show? <laughs> Okay, that last very nice. <laughs> you be able to see that happened that shimmer, that three D, and I uh, cut out the speaking part, the tones of it, because when that move happened, all you hear me say is "Oh shit!" Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it was amazing to me. The, they beat up Zoe. Uh, I mean, but that's neat. Like I said, it. she's my friend. Imagine <laughs> if she wasn't. Imagine what would happen if she wasn't. <laughs> yes, yes. Now. Uh, 2021 has ended. Um, you have any reflections on your 2021? Because a lot of people, they knew you, but a lot more people are knowing you. You know, Blind Force Trauma is getting buzz, seeing you out there fighting for championships everywhere. Uh, you have a reflection on 2021? Oh, man. I don't know. I just feel like it was like a slower year than the years previously. Um, I felt like it started off kind of like rocky. And I was very uncertain of what I was doing in wrestling. But now that I'm tagging, like I'm having fun again. I'm getting back on the road. I'm enjoying being out there. Uh, it's nice to see the fans again. So, like, I was really uncertain about what I was going to do after everything. But, you know, as long as I'm still having fun, I'm still going to be around. Great. Uh, <laughs> now, Sorry, my, you my dog does podcasts with me. <laughs> What's your dog's name? Star Lord. Say Star hi. Star Isn't he Lord. cute? <laughs> That's a great name too, Star Lord. One of my characters. <laughs> but I have to ask you, Ray Lynn. Um, I don't know if I should ask this, but let's let's I'll come back to that maybe. Um, <laughs> Circle so back. You, yeah. So I usually lean in, and um, I say rock or stone cold. Hmm. So when I went to wrestling school and I didn't know anything really about wrestling, they asked me who my favorite wrestler was. And I was like, The Rock. Right? right. But as I learned more about wrestling, I still like The Rock. Okay. Stone Cold. <laughs> okay, there we go. As we went back and I watched, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, Stone Cold. <laughs> that's, that's a fair answer. Uh what we're doing on Women on Wednesday this week, people, uh, this year, uh, since no one so far has picked the rock, um, the first person who does pick the rock does get the figurine. Um, so we're over three right now. Um, <laughs> I said him first. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, I don't know. We may get one once someone names it. We'll open up. Our 
I tell you when it happens, what happened, but the people will appreciate it. Uh oh, Raylan, twenty twenty two. Okay. I'm out here. I'm a fan. I come to an event. I see Ray Lynn on the show. Uh, MCW probably has another show coming up. Um, where can I expect to see you at in 2022? Places that you can name, because I've talked to a lot of people, and it's some things you can't give up to us announced, but if there any well, questions. there's a thing, and I've always felt this way, because there was like three times I was supposed to go to China before I finally got to China. So it's kind of like you don't want to put out too much and you don't want to tell people exactly what you're doing because you don't know until you're literally in the ring. Like you can get called to do a booking and you could be sitting there and they could change it. So um, I think that's why we're all like, I don't know. I can't really say, right. Cause you don't want to, it's for me. I don't want to jinx it. Um, but I know for sure I will be wrestling at queen of the North uh, with my tag partner and that's BCW. Yeah. Dream combination wrestling on January twenty yeah. first in New Jersey, I believe. Thirtieth. January thirty. Yeah. And then um Belladonna's, I will be there on January fifteenth. Belladonna's is in Alabama. Yeah. And then um MCW on the fourth and fifth, or wait, the fifth and sixth MCW. They're doing two different locations at there i'm actually really busy in february but i don't know where i'm gonna be i don't remember <laughs> uh the belladonna division down in gaston uh, mm -hmm. okay you, you go. she got something pretty cool going on there like uh it's a newer company but it's it's a tournament so it'll be a lot of fun oh, yeah. heather will be there and i haven't seen her in a few weeks so it's sad can't wait <laughs> and that's january 15th yes you guys are seeing this that's this weekend so if you're in the gaston area get down there and enjoy it wait a minute am i going yeah you're right are you going i don't think i'll be able to because my flight uh i'll be down that way but i think i get there later in the afternoon because i'm going to terminus oh is that the same day it's the next day Okay, so the thing that looks next. like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so if my flight is right, I've taken a trip from Alabama to Atlanta before. I may show up because... Uh, I think it's the, only like an hour and a half from the airport. Yeah, because one of the commentators, uh, Stephanie Hardy, how you doing? Uh, talk to her. So, you know, I like what they're doing down there. It should be a great event if you haven't been there before. Um. Man, we we didn't talk about everything here. <laughs> uh oh, are you gonna be at Mania? I mean, I just asked everybody down in the Dallas area. I don't know yet. I'm um, I'm not playing. I don't really do the whole Mania booking thing. Oh, you don't? No, I've won a few times, but it's not like I don't know. It's not like a top priority for me. Does that sound weird? No. Yeah. I know I, people tell me that like. If I get booked, I may go, but I'm not going down there just to see if I can get on the show. Um, yeah, that that part. Because it ends up being kind of, if you're there for a couple of days, like, it just ends up being kind of a, it's an oversaturated time. So if you're not, like, working for one of those companies, then it's kind of hard to get on a show. And I'm not just going to go and chill and try to get on a show. Like, I've been wrestling for a while, and I don't want to just be like, hey, guys, <laughs> let's get <everything else." laughs> Oversaturation is the word because, whew, yeah, and no it. offense because, like, there's a lot of people that go down and they end up doing great things through the year. And maybe if I had a little bit more, uh, I don't know what the word's going to be for it, yeah, I don't know. And some people do those shows, they get seen and they do a lot of really cool shit the next year. So maybe, like, I should go, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mission Pro, uh, bring uh, BFT back or bring Way Lee in, bring them back. Y'all said y'all was running uh, during Mania Weekend. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's just me talking. Oh, man. Oh, that's the question. So <laughs> I'm going to ask it because my I, I got this from one of my friends. Um, okay. He told me to ask you. I don't know. I've never heard it. Um, but apparently you have a nickname of the Miley Cyrus of wrestling. So that was like back in OVW, like the first 
year I was there. Do you remember whenever Miley twerked on Robin Thicke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know how to wrestle and that I would just twerk on Lady Tappa. <laughs> and then she just like destroy me. So it was like just kind of like a gimmick we did at house shows. It was usually like I'd run out and I'd twerk on her a little bit and then she'd kill me with her finisher. So then I just started going by I'm like, I am the Miley Cyrus of professional wrestling. Right. So it was it was a joke. <laughs> okay. He's an OVW fan, so I guess that's why I was like, I've never mm. heard of that, but and actually I went a little I completely forgot about this because this has been a long time. So then there were like these other little indie bookings here in Pittsburgh where I would I still couldn't wrestle. So I was like all gimmick. And I would come out and I would sing Wrecking Ball to the ring really obnoxiously because I don't sing. So <laughs> <laughs> Any video of that out there anywhere? I might be able to find one on YouTube. There was a mm. there was someone that was like so obsessed with it. They loved it. They still bring it up to this day sometimes. And yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a YouTube video of it. If we find it, put it right here, Terry. All right. All right. <laughs> now, the last thing we do here, this is totally for you. So we have you on. We always oh, we always want the people to support you. We want them to be able to find your social media, uh, purchase a t-shirt, any type of way they can support you. We just ask if you could put yourself over. I can totally do that. I'm good at that. <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram at raystar5. Um, Twitter, it's ray underscore Lynn. I just set up a big cartel. So all of my sites have a link tree on it. So then you can find out how to purchase my merchandise. I have a pro wrestling tease as well. I don't think I have that link up because I forgot to do that. But my big cartel and I have pro wrestling tees. There's all kinds of ways to buy my merch. So check it out. Is that corny <laughs> enough? Did I do it corny enough? <laughs> no, you're good. I actually do that <laughs> when I promote the title match network. <laughs> uh, so she says she has a big cartel pro wrestling tee link tree. As you know, on all our videos, if you go right into the bottom, all the links for everything she named will be right down there. So you'll be able to click right to it and go right to her page and support um, Ray Lynn. So I, I thank you for doing this. Um, thank you. Sorry it took so long. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tell you guys the truth. What happened here? I sent her a message. So I saw her at Warrior Wrestling. That's 2020. And I was like, I knew Ray Lynn a little bit because, you know, just seeing her places, but seeing her at Warrior Wrestling, when you see people live, and I've seen her a few times back to back, I was like, yo, she's great. Um, then I saw her Mission Pro, I'm like, yo, she's doing it. So I sent the message, it was maybe January in 2020. I got stuck in that spam folder. Hey, that's, that spam folder on Instagram is bad. So she never said anything back, and I was like, uh, okay. But like she said at the beginning, she's seen me a few times out. I just, because I'm the type of person like, hey, they didn't respond to the message. I'm not going to ask face to face because they already gave their answer. You should have because I would have found it <laughs> quicker. I was like, let me just be a fan and take this picture. Um, she said I should have. So let's go here then. <laughs> so we're doing this thing called uh, Tag Team Territory. Um, spotlighting Tag Teams. I would love to have you back on with your tag team partner. Let's do it. Um, because I can't really say. Well, there's something that's coming up and it's people that I want to talk to. But, you know, CCW or Mission Pro? Don't do that to me. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> Don't do that to me. I have loyalty, though. Which uh, tag titles do you want first? Oh, well, we're just going to beat the Renegade Twins ass for everything they've been doing to us. So both of them. But which one do we want first? I don't know. Can we just win them both at the same time? Double. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> that that's something planned there. I mean, but, but you and Blind Force Trauma Renegade Twins, you got like a rivalry going on if nobody really knows in two matches that um, so you guys had two matches. Yes, I know, I know you need to get the win, a, a win back or or something. We do. They've been talking. They talk them and their mom <laughs> always talking shit. Mama Renegade doesn't. Mama hope Renegade that. always talking shit. 
I might have to call someone else's, not my mom, because my mom can't fight, but I might have to get someone else's mom to come and we can do a three on three. <laughs> Mama Renegade, I'm clipping this out just for you so you can hear. <laughs> right <laughs> <in your face. laughs> because I talk to you and they watch these. So if you get a message from them when this goes up, find somebody. I would fight me. Fight me. That's fine. Fight me. No more renegade fighter. Mm. Oh, man. Let's get out of here before we start something else. <laughs> um, but coming soon, like she said, we might have blind force trauma on here. I mean, Heather Monroe's probably going to come on at some point, so we might as well have them both. Let's do it. Ooh, diamond days are ahead. But Ray Lynn, you're in, are you a Midwest native? I'm from Pittsburgh. I don't think we consider ourselves Midwest or East Coast. We're our own thing. Yinzer Nation. Don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just no? Nope. Nope. Did you say Yinzer? Yinzers. That's what we are. What is we're that? Not, we're not Midwest. We're not East Coast. We're Yinzers. Google it. <laughs> you gotta Google it right now because I've never even heard of Yinzers before. Yinzers? I've been to. Hmm. It's a thing. It really is a thing. Oh wow! A native or inhabitant of the. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. We're a whole own thing. Yes, like they call people in Indiana Hoosiers. You guys are. Yeah, Yinzers. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you learn something new every, every time. Shout out to Pittsburgh and the Yinzers, you know, uh, doing your thing. Uh, we're going to get out of here because I don't know what Yinzers mean, and I feel like I'm going to make a joke <laughs> that probably shouldn't be made. But we thank Ray Lynn for joining us here. Blind Force Traumas or Tag Team. She got pink hair. It's all good. It's all good. It's good. <laughs> um, but again, thank you for giving us this time. We appreciate you. Keep doing your thing. We wish you all the best in 2022. But we will thank talk you. to you again. And to close it out, like I always say, I'm trading. And like I always say, if I love wrestling and you love wrestling, then we We love, love wrestling. It's too sweet. <laughs> it's too sweet. <laughs> you love wrestling and you love wrestling, then we love wrestling. You're not here, you missing out. Is this show? Is this